Ooh, I haven't done one of these in a while. Getting to rank some positions in Major League Baseball. Now you might be wondering, how are you gonna rank anything right now? There's been nothing that's changed since you did your last rankings in December. Well, there actually is a change here because from what it looks like, if we do get a season in 2020, the National League is going to have a DH. We're gonna be a universal DH league, which I personally love. So back in December, when I ranked the DHs, we only talked about the American League. Now, when I'm ranking the DHs, we're only gonna be talking about the National League. Not necessarily gonna be doing every single player. I'm more gonna be talking about the teams because right now, National League teams aren't built necessarily to have a DH. If anything, they would use that DH spot to get another bat into the lineup, to have a little bit more flexibility in their lineups. So as always, if you guys do enjoy these ranking videos, you want to see more of them on the channel, make sure to leave a like. That's the best way to show your support. Subscribe if you're new and you enjoy the content. If you love baseball, click that sub button and join the team. Remember to get in the comments down below. I want to hear your rankings about DHs in National League. Who do you think's the best? Who do you think's the worst? And don't forget, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at GiraffeNeckMark. Links in the description as well as my Twitch. Everything is down there, GiraffeNeckMark. So I think it's safe to say that the worst team in the National League for the DH is going to be the Pittsburgh Pirates. That just seems very, very obvious to me as a fan of baseball. They're not like a horrendous, horrendous team. They're just not very good. And a lot of their problems stem from their offense. They just don't have a lot of great quality bats. Now you have Josh Bell, you have Brian Reynolds, and you've got Adam Frazier, Kevin Newman. Like they can swing the bat a little bit, but when you add another bat into that lineup for the DH, the options there are very, very limited. A lot of their guys on the bench are defensive options, and their best bat off the bench right now is probably Jose Osuna, and he's just not really that good of a hitter. So for me, the Pittsburgh Pirates are definitely coming in as the worst ranked team for the National League DHs. They're going to come in at 15, just not a lot of flexibility there, not a lot of great options. Coming in at the number 14 spot, second to last, is going to be the San Francisco Giants. Now the San Francisco Giants fans that watch this, you're probably going to want to turn away because I'm about to rip the team apart. They're not very good. Another one of these teams that's going to be atrocious in 2020. Regardless of the season, they're going to be bad. Offensively, like who are you going to put at the DH spot? Hunter Pence actually is probably going to be the best choice there. There, but then you weaken up your outfield by having a guy maybe like Austin Slater or Jalen Davis. Those guys will then become everyday players. So while Hunter Pence is actually a good fit for the DH spot, it weakens the rest of the team, which is why I'm not going to put them very high on this ranking. So yes, while you could go with Wilmer Flores, you could go with Hunter Pence, the DH doesn't do as much help to them as it would for some of the other teams. The Giants just don't really have a lot of great options. They're going to be 14th for me. At the number 13 spot, we're staying in the National League West. It's a popular division for weak DHs. I'm going to go with the San Diego Padres. Now the Padres have gotten a lot better as a team. That doesn't mean because they have a bad DH, they're not a good team. But with the DH being added, the options that are available aren't necessarily the best. You've got Josh Naylor and Will Myers you could throw out there. They're kind of just like middle of the pack though. They're not particularly great offensively anymore. Josh Naylor's probably got a bigger upside right now than Will Myers in the DH spot. Maybe Frangie Cordero, but then again, these are guys who are probably going to be playing in the outfield a little bit. Greg Garcia, Bravik Valera, Francisco Mejia, like all these different options that you use at DH, none of them really stick out to you and go, oh dang, that makes the lineup a whole lot better. So for me, the Padres are going to be a 13th best team in the National League for the DH. At number 12, sticking in the National League West, going with the Colorado Rockies. Rockies are in a very similar situation with the San Diego Padres. Their guys that they would be filling in necessarily aren't the best. It's just that they have a lot of different options that they can use better than the teams that I previously mentioned. For the Rockies, you can finally get Daniel Murphy or Ian Desmond out of the field. You can get them in the DH spot. Get someone who can get some better fielding out there rather than having to weaken that by having Murphy or Ian Desmond out there. You still get their bat. You can find playing time then for Garrett Hampson, Brendan Rodgers, Sam Hilliard, Raymel Tapia. You can get some of these other guys in the lineup more consistently. You can even DH Charlie Blackman. They've got a lot more options than the teams below them. So Rockies, 12. Just missing on the top 10 of the National League. Coming in at number 11, I've got the Miami Marlins. The Marlins are an interesting team. They have some decent bats. They are much improved on the offensive side from the year past, but it's still not very good. Now, you can DH Matt Joyce, who is going to tear apart right-handed pitching. He's a nice left-handed bat. Maybe you could DH Jesus Aguilar if you wanted to call Blue and Diaz and play him at first base this year, but I don't think you're going to do that. John Birdie's not really an option for DH. Harold Ramirez. I mean, some of these guys are very weak. Their best option and probably really their only option is going to be Matt Joyce, who will hit righties. Still, like, not that good. So getting the top 10 started at the number 10 spot, I'm going to go with the St. Louis Cardinals. Now, hear me out. The Cardinals have a ton of options. I just don't think it makes their team much better than what it already is, especially compared to the people ahead of them. Now, we know about their extremely crowded outfield. Funny enough, they trade away Jose Martinez, who would have been perfect now for them in St. Louis. So your options really go between, like, Dexter Fowler, Tyler O'Neill, Brad Miller. You're going to find a spot for Tommy Edmond. He's probably going to maybe move into the outfield, but at least you get to get him in the DH spot. I think Edmond's probably like their best choice at DH, but he has value in the field because he plays multiple positions. So that's where like this weird give and take comes through. I think that they're definitely improving by having a DH. It's just not as much as the other teams. At number nine, I'm sticking in the National League Central. I'm going to go with the Chicago Cubs, who are a very interesting scenario. Kyle Schwarber, wouldn't he be the perfect DH? He'd be so good. Yes, in a perfect world, if you built your team to have a DH, Kyle Schwarber would be perfect out there, even though he has improved a lot in the outfield the last few years. Problem with the 
Cubs lies in, then who takes the spot for Kyle Schwarber? Who's going to be that extra bat? Because you're not necessarily adding Kyle Schwarber to the lineup. He was always going to be there no matter what. The added bat would now be like what? Albert Almora Jr., Steven Souza Jr., Daniel Descalzo, David Bodie. Those choices necessarily aren't the best. You have a lot of versatility with the Cubs. You can make a lot of different changes and have guys in different positions. I put them at nine because I think Schwarber would be the DH and he's definitely going to hit. The reason they're not much higher though is because then you'd be adding in another guy, like I said, Steven Souza or Albert Almora Jr. into the lineup. So I think number nine is the right spot for the Cubs. For the eighth best team in the National League, if there were to be a DH, I'm going to go with the Arizona Diamondbacks. The Diamondbacks are a sneaky good team in 2020. Keep an eye out for them, especially in a shortened season. This is someone you need to watch to sneak up on the Dodgers. Now the DH spot, they're right around the middle of the National League. I think that they have a lot of really good options. It's just that you kind of need things to go perfectly for them if they're going to work out that well. Jake Lamb would be a huge option. Left-handed power bat, destroys right-handed pitching, doesn't really hit lefties much. If you wanted to, you could take a Kevin Crone to be that guy to verse right-handed pitching. They have a lot more guys that fit that typical DH spot that would improve their lineup and make it much deeper than it would normally be, which is why I have them at the number eight spot. The lineup does get better with the DH. At number seven, I'm going to go with the Milwaukee Brewers, who initially I didn't think would be a good pick, but looking at their lineup, it's kind of made for a DH. It's going to help them a ton if they have it. You've got Keston Hira, who's a horrible second baseman who can now be a DH and just rake. You got Jed Jerko, who is a guy who doesn't have a spot in the field, but he hits pretty decent. You can let Ryan Braun DH now. You don't have to worry about him in the field. You can let Justin Smoke DH. You could go Avisayo Garcia. They have a ton of different options and a ton of different guys that they can plug into this DH spot. Their lineup would improve massively by having that extra hitter. They just have a lot of different guys that they can cycle in and out. They can play matchups really, really well by having this DH spot. That's why they come in at number seven. Just missing on the top five, coming in at the number six spot, I'm going to go with the fourth place Philadelphia Phillies. The Phillies actually would love a DH. This would be really big for their lineup. One, you wouldn't have to really play Jay Bruce out there ever. He would only be a DH. If you keep him in the DH spot, he has value. He's a guy who can hit for power against righties. Even against lefties, he has some pop still. By having him at the DH, it allows you then to put a guy like Adam Hazley in center field and really not feel that hurt with his bat because you can replace that with Jay Bruce and you get really, really good defense with Adam Hazley in center. They may not have as many options as maybe the Brewers or the Cardinals, but I think the option that they do have is going to be better, which is why I put them at number six. You have Bruce at DH and you have Hazley in center field. That's a much improved team. Starting off the top five, coming in at the number five spot, we're going with the defending National League East champions, Atlanta Braves. This Braves team is going to be a lot of fun. You add a DH into the mix, it's going to be even more fun. It allows you to add a guy like Johan Camargo, Austin Riley, Ender Inciarte, Adam Duvall. They now get to be in the lineup every single day, and that's because of the DH spot. In theory, they could DH Marcelo Zuna. Now, will this happen? No. Marcelo Zuna wants to play the outfield. He signed a one-year deal. He wants to get paid. Being a DH, he won't do that. But in theory, you could DH Marcelo Zuna, get Ender Inciarte out in the outfield, improve that defense, along with getting a guy who's not terrible at the plate. Not good, but not bad. You could get Adam Duvall, who has at times shown that he has a bunch of pop in his bat. Also a very solid fielder. I really like what the Braves can do with the DH. It allows for a lot of different guys to go into the lineup. You get sneak Nick Marcakis in there, even if you wanted to. They have a lot of really good options. Very, very solid. Call me crazy here, but at the number four spot in the National League for the DH, I'm going with the Washington Nationals. This team feels like they were built for the DH. They signed Eric Thames this offseason. They have Ryan Zimmerman still. They've got Howie Kendrick. They've got Starlin Castro. They've got Azdrubal Cabrera. They have a lot of guys who don't necessarily have a lot of spots. The DH opens up another spot for those bats, and you can put the best guys in the field. Starlin Castro would be a pretty solid DH. Eric Thames wouldn't have to play the field every single day. Ryan Zimmerman wouldn't have to play the field every day. Zimmerman, a guy who has injury issues. He can't play a full 162. You give him the DH spot, you can get him in the lineup more often now. As Drupal Cabrera, Howie Kendrick, guys who are getting a little bit up there in age but can still swing, you can get their bats in the lineup more often by having this DH now. Definitely would be a huge improvement to the team. That's why I have them at number four. For the third best team in the National League with the DH, I'm going to go to the Cincinnati Reds, who had an amazing offseason, and a DH would really top it off. They added Mike Moustakis. They added Nick Castellanos. Added Shogo Akiyama. They have a lot of really good bats that can now be used with the DH even more. Nick Castellanos has improved in the field, but he's not good out there. Put him in the DH spot. He can then get someone who is a better fielder out there every single day, stealing some outs out there in the outfield instead of having Castellanos out there. You could put Aquino at the DH spot. You could put Akiyama. You could put Vado on days off. You could put Mike Moustakas. You could put Eugenio Suarez. All these guys can be shuffling around depending on matchups, depending on days. You want to give a guy off but still have the bat in there. I love what the Reds can do with the DH. They are definitely one of the teams that can gain the most. I mean, that's kind of why I ranked them at number three. It would be massive for their success in 2020 to have the DH. Okay, so at the number two spot, I'm ready for it. Biased fan, but I'm going with the New York Mets. The Mets would be the second best DH team in the National League. They have crazy amount of options. They have a lot of players built for the DH. Pete Alonso, not great defensively at first, 
base, improving. You stick Dom Smith now at first base. You have Pete Alonso as your DH. You improve defensively. You improve offensively by having Dom Smith in there. That's awesome. J.D. Davis can play DH. Robinson Cano can be the DH. It opens up so much there. You can stick McNeil then at second. You can stick J.D. at third. You can have real outfielders in the outfield. Yo, when is Cespedes? Cespedes is going to be healthy when the season's around. You can DH Nimmo. You can DH anyone. The Mets gain a ton by having a DH. And the biggest bat is probably going to be Cespedes. Cespedes at the DH for the Mets would be huge. From what we've seen in spring this far, and you know what? I am being an optimistic Mets fan here. It looks like he still knows how to hit. So yeah, Mets, the second ranked team DH in the National League. And then coming at number one, probably the best team in baseball just in general, but definitely the best team in the National League with a DH. It's going to be the Los Angeles Dodgers. And there's just no other answer that's correct. They are the best DH team in the National League. So behind the plate, catch Austin Barnes, Will Smith can DH. You say, oh, what else you got? Matt Beatty, Kike Hernandez, Max Muncy, Edwin Rios, Justin Turner, Corey Seager. You got Mookie Betts, Bellinger out in the outfield. They're never going to DH, but if you want to, they could. But you got Jock Peterson, AJ Pollock, Chris Taylor. Everybody offensively on the Dodgers is a good bat. By having the DH, you allow another good bat to be in the lineup every single day. This team was already flexible with where they play players. They're moving guys around all over the place. They would be able to do that even more now. Dodgers would 100% be the best team in the National League with the DH. They just gain so, so much. They can get so many more bats into the lineup on a given day. Play matchups even more than they already do. One through nine, that is the best lineup arguably in baseball with the DH. I don't know how you beat them. So those are my DH rankings for teams in the National League. I'd love to know what you guys think about it down in the comment section below. I'm expecting to see a lot of biased Mets fans comments, but I'm telling you, they're at least top three and top two is not crazy. But you know, let me see what you got to say. Remember to leave a like on the video if you did enjoy it as well. Subscribe to the channel if you have not yet done so. Remember guys, we'll be streaming on Twitch later today. So if you want to check that out, twitch.tv slash Mark. All links to my socials are in the description below. Thank you guys for watching. I need baseball back soon. Tuesday, they're coming to the players with a new proposal. I hope it's good because we need it back. You guys know the drill from here on out. YouTube recommends you watch this video as well as this is my most recent upload. So click through those if you have not yet seen them. Thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you all tomorrow for another video.